Hello, everyone. My name is Malte Moser, and today I'm going to give you a brief teaser of our paper on resurrecting address clustering in Bitcoin. Today, arguably one of the biggest privacy risks in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin is that of address reuse. Basically, if a user only uses a single address for all of their activity, then as soon as someone is able to associate their real identity with their Bitcoin address, all of their transaction activity on the Bitcoin blockchain has been exposed and linked to them. Because it's so cheap to generate fresh addresses in cryptocurrencies, um, a common countermeasure is to generate a fresh address whenever possible. This way, a lot of the transaction activity can be spread across a variety of different addresses. And if someone's able to associate one of those addresses with your real world identity, you still have a degree of privacy because not all of your transaction activity has been exposed. The question of address clustering in Bitcoin then is, can we still somehow identify all of those different addresses under a single user's control? This question is very important for a variety of different people. For example, you can imagine that for law enforcement agencies investigating, for example, thefts in cryptocurrencies, um, they re require reliable techniques to identify relevant activity of those actors. For us researchers, accurate grouping of activity is also very useful for aggregate analyses. And we are often interested in full clustering of the Bitcoin blockchain for some longitudinal analyses, for example. And ordinary Bitcoin users are interested in understanding the privacy implications of those address clustering techniques to learn um, how private their activity on the Bitcoin blockchain really is. Generally, there are two types of address clustering heuristics that we can use. The first one is the multi-input heuristic. It has been around for a long time, where addresses that are used conjointly in a transaction belong to the same user. This technique is very reliable and moderately effective, but it misses addresses that are never co-spent with each other. A second class of heuristics look at trying to identify the change of a transaction. So whenever you spend money, the wallet software will return the surplus value to an address under your control. And the goal of change identification and the focus of this paper is on these heuristics that aim at identifying change outputs. Let me give you a quick example for how that might work. Imagine you use a classic wallet that uses classic pubkey hash address types. And then you make a payment to a merchant who uses a multi-sig address uh, wrapped in a script hash address. Then it is very easy to tell apart the change and the spend because the change is likely the output that has the same address type as the input. But here's the question, is this heuristic always correct and how do we know? And that's a really hard question because so far it has been really difficult to validate these heuristics. Large scale ground truth data is simply not available to us researchers and trying to manually collect such data often falls short on a variety of different dimensions such as the amount of transactions you will be able to collect as well as the collection timeframe over which you can collect that data. But it's also very difficult to use these heuristics simply because the reliability of them is unknown and false positives, especially with change address clustering, can very easily lead to cluster collapse, meaning that it's very easy if we pick the wrong change address to merge two clusters of two users that shouldn't be clustered together. And so our work in this paper addresses both of these issues. The first important thing that we do in our paper is that we propose a novel technique to extract ground truth from the blockchain that allows us to validate those change address heuristics. The idea that we use is that 
the multi-input heuristic may actually reveal change outputs at a later point in time on the blockchain. So imagine you have a first transaction that uses two inputs with addresses A and B, and then creates a change output C. If that change output at a later point in time is spent together with one of those addresses A or B, then those addresses will get clustered together by the multi-input heuristic, and that reveals that address C was the change in the previous transaction. And by applying this technique to the entire Bitcoin blockchain, we can now get a big ground truth data set of transactions where this technique has publicly revealed the change output. And so if we apply this to the Bitcoin blockchain, what we get is a huge data set of 35 million transactions with known change. There's of course a lot of work that went into making sure that ground truth data set is reliable and all of those details are in the paper. The next step then is to use this ground truth data set and to actually look at those heuristics and see how well they do. And in our paper, we look at two general types of heuristics. One are universal heuristics, which are heuristics that can be applied to any transaction, such as, for example, the, the address type heuristic that I showed to you before. A second type of heuristic that we look at and something that hasn't been evaluated before is that of the consistent fingerprint heuristic. If you use a specific Bitcoin wallet, you kind of assume that the characteristics of the transaction that it creates are similar across multiple transactions. So we can look at the transaction that spends at output and see whether it has the same characteristics. If it does, then this is likely the change. Looking at all the protocol characteristics that are available, as well as a lot of the techniques and heuristics that have been proposed, um, we compiled a list of nine universal and 17 fingerprint heuristics. And then we applied these to our ground truth transactions. And what we can see here is that in general, the average number of correct votes per transaction is much higher than the average number of incorrect votes. Meaning that if you have many different heuristics to apply to a transaction, that on average, these heuristics will be successful in determining the correct change output. Another observation that we were able to make is that the fingerprint heuristics actually see a steady uptick over the past few years, which is due to the increasing variety of protocol features, such as, for example, um, segregated witness in Bitcoin. At the same time, sometimes these upgrades, um, especially when wallets then upgrade to new protocols can also lead to false positives. Now, seeing that on average, these heuristics are successful at determining the change, our next goal was to build new models to predict the, the change. And the goal here is to combine the heuristics for more accurate predictions. In our paper, we look at two mechanisms. The first one is kind of a baseline. Um, we use a threshold vote. Basically, if, if more heuristics vote for output A compared to output B, then A is likely the change. And then you can vary the threshold for how many more votes you want for a certain output than for the other. And the second technique that we evaluate is a random forest classifier. A random forest classifier in this context is able to learn a combination of heuristics that it is most accurate. And the cool thing about the random forest is that we can include additional features that allows it to distinguish between different types of transactions. For example, we can include um, the time period in which a transaction was created. So if within different epochs, basically different heuristics have different success rate, the random forest classifier can account for that. If we evaluate the performance of these two models, we see that both are quite effective at predicting change, but the random forest clearly outperforms um, the threshold vote. The plot on the left shows the true positive rate compared to the false positive rate at different thresholds. A true positive basically means that we've correctly identified a change output. And the false positive means 
that the classifier has identified the spend output as a change. And our goal here is to get really low false positives while still determining a large number of change outputs in order to prevent cluster collapse. So if we actually look at the low false positive rates by plotting that here on a log scale, we see that the random forest classifier um, clearly outperforms the threshold vote, detecting as many as twice the amount of change outputs at those low false positive rates. The next step was then to use those classifiers to kind of predict change outputs for transactions where we don't know it yet, and then cluster those change outputs for an enhanced clustering. So applying the classifiers to the transactions on the Bitcoin blockchain and selecting a conservative probability threshold to prevent cluster collapse, we were able to cluster 155 million predicted change outputs. And what we found is that in most cases, we see a small growth in the size for most clusters. However, what we saw is that for some big clusters, applying change adjust detection naively led to cluster collapse. So what we did on top of our prediction was to define additional constraints that were able to prevent this type of cluster collapse, basically putting constraints on conflicting predictions that our model made that were then able to prevent the cluster collapse that we saw for some clusters of intermediaries. Finally, we looked at the impact of that enhanced clustering on different types of blockchain analysis. And we found that with this conservative clustering that we produced, that there is an estimated impact of 11 to 14%. And that number might seem small, but it comes primarily because our enhanced clustering predominantly affected smaller clusters. And if we try to cluster and detect more aggressively, that number could change. With this, I'm at the end of my presentation. I thank you very much. If you find this interesting, please go ahead and read our paper. And I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you.